What do you think happens when we die, Keanu Reeves? I know that the ones who love us will miss us. In Hollywood, where fame usually means big egos, Keanu Reeves is different. He's known all over the world, but he's still down to earth and careful about choosing his movie roles. Lately, he explained why he said no to a really good offer for a movie role. But before we get into that, let's take a step back and look at who Keanu Reeves really is, how he lives, what he's like, and how he got to where he is today in his acting career. Early life. Keanu Reeves, the famous movie star, has a life story as surprising as the characters he plays. It all started far away from Hollywood, in the city of Beirut, Lebanon. He was born on September 2, 1964. His mom, Patricia Taylor, was a costume designer from England full of creativity. His dad, Samuel Nowlin Reeves Jr., was a geologist from Hawaii with a mix of native Hawaiian, Chinese, English, Irish, and Portuguese family roots. But their love story didn't last long, and Keanu's dad left when he was just three years old. Keanu's childhood was like a long journey. His mom wanted a better life for them, so they moved first to Sydney, Australia, and then to the busy city of New York. There she married Paul Aaron, a theater director, in 1970. Young Keanu even got to be in a play called Damn Yankees when he was nine. But things kept changing. Eventually, his family settled in Toronto, Canada, but even there, life was always shifting. His mom married and divorced again, leaving Keanu and his sisters mostly with a babysitter. Still, growing up, Keanu learned about different cultures. His grandmother was Chinese, so he got to experience beautiful Eastern art and food. His mom taught him to be polite and reserved, like people in England often are. School was tough for Keanu. He had trouble reading, which made it hard to keep up. He went to four different high schools and even got kicked out of one for being too loud and opinionated. Keanu found some happiness playing hockey. He was a great goalie and dreamed of playing for Canada in the Olympics. But at age 15, he realized his future was somewhere else, in the exciting but unpredictable world of acting. Early work. Luckily, his stepdad believed in him, and Keanu found a way to balance it all. He enrolled in Avondale Secondary Alternative School, which allowed him to study and get those first acting gigs. 1984 was a big year. He landed a reporting job on Going Great a Canadian TV show for young people, and scored his first acting role in an episode of the series Hangin' In. The theater world called too. He took the stage as the passionate Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet, then starred in the gritty play Wolf Boy. Hollywood wasn't always welcoming. Some agents thought his name, Keanu, was too different and suggested he change it. For a while, he went by Casey Reeves, but thankfully, he chose to stand out and reclaim his unique name. 1986 marked his big screen debut in the sports drama Young Blood. More films followed, and Keanu's breakthrough came that same year with the dark and powerful performance in River's Edge. The late 1980s were a whirlwind of roles, a goofy teen in 1988's The Night Before, a charming but naive young man in the critically praised Dangerous Liaisons, Yet it was 1989's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure that made him a true star. As the lovable, air-headed Ted, Keanu won everyone over. His journey in Hollywood was just taking off. Keanu wasn't afraid to try new things. After making everyone laugh in Bill and Ted, he showed a whole different side with roles in 1989's Parenthood, a heartwarming family drama, and 1990's dark comedy I Love You to Death. He even popped up in Paula Abdul's super popular Rush Rush music video, Adult Roles. The iconic Bill and Ted returned in 1991 with Bogus Journey. This time, the critics liked Keanu even more. The famous critic Roger Ebert called it funny and imaginative. Just like that, Keanu decided it was time to leave his carefree teen roles behind. He teamed up with the talented Driver Phoenix in the thought provoking 1991 film My Own Private Idaho. Gus Van Sant, the director, wove in ideas from Shakespeare as Kanu played a street kid searching for his place in the world. 
Critics raved, and Keanu was proving how deep his acting could go. But he didn't forget about action. In 1991's Point Break, he played a rookie FBI agent who goes undercover in a gang of thrill-seeking surfers who are also bank robbers. Keanu was totally believable as a tough but conflicted hero. His band Dog Star was also taking off around this time. Then it was another mega-famous director, Francis Ford Coppola, casting Keanu as Jonathan Harker in 1992's Dracula. The role was a huge stretch, but trying new things is what Keanu does best. He even tried a British accent, with mixed results. More Shakespeare followed with Much Ado About Nothing in 1993. Then some offbeat dramas like Even Cowgirls Get the Blues and Little Buddha. Keanu was taking risks, and his career was getting more and more interesting. Action hero, stumbles, then a legendary comeback. 1994 was the year Keanu cemented his status as an action superstar. In Speed, his character Jack Traven wasn't just some muscle-bound hero. Keanu brought a relatable, down-to-earth quality to the role, making his race to save a busload of hostages feel heart-pounding lie real. The movie was a massive hit, and Keanu was the guy everyone was crushing on. He kept the sci-fi vibes going in 1995 with Johnny Mnemonic. The idea was super cool, a data courier with top-secret info implanted in his brain, on the run in a dystopian future. Sadly, the execution didn't quite match the ambition, and the film disappointed critics and fans alike. Hoping for a change of pace, he starred in the sweeping romance A Walk in the Clouds, as a soldier returning from World War II swept up in a whirlwind love affair. Keanu aimed for classic leading man vibes. Reactions were split. Some swooned over its old-fashioned charm while others found it overly sentimental. Feeling a bit adrift, Keanu stepped away from Hollywood for a while. In a surprise move, he returned to his theater roots in 1995. He took on the iconic role of Hamlet in a Winnipeg production, channeling the Prince of Denmark's rage and vulnerability. Critics raved, calling his performance one of the best interpretations of the character they'd ever seen. His movie comeback was bumpy, 1996's Chain Reaction, a thriller about a conspiracy to suppress clean energy. Boasted big stars like Morgan Freeman, but fizzled with audiences. Neither the crime comedy, Feeling Minnesota, nor the darkly quirky, The Last Time I Committed Suicide, fared much better. Just when things seemed bleak, Keanu delivered a knockout punch with 1997's The Devil's Advocate. Playing a hotshot lawyer lured into a supernatural showdown, he held his own against the legendary Al Pacino and the captivating Charlize Theron. This was a whole new Keanu, edgy, intense, and proving he could handle complex, morally gray characters. The movie was a hit, and Keanu was poised for a comeback that would change everything stardom with the Matrix franchise and comedies. Keanu had starred in a lot of movies by the late 1990s, but his role in The Matrix would be unlike anything he, or the world, had ever seen. This wasn't just some futuristic shoot 'em up film. The Matrix asked big questions about reality and what it means to be human. Keanu played Neo, a seemingly ordinary computer programmer who starts to suspect something isn't quite right with the world. Turns out, he's totally right. Everything he knows is a lie, a computer simulation designed to keep humanity enslaved by machines. To become Neo, Keanu went all in. He studied philosophy, science, anything to grasp the film's mind-bending concepts. But Neo wasn't just a thinker, he was a fighter. Keanu trained tirelessly with the legendary Yuan Wuping, mastering complex kung fu moves for those epic battle sequences. When The Matrix hit theaters in 1999, it was a phenomenon. The special effects were groundbreaking, the story was unlike anything audiences had experienced, and Keanu's performance as Neo was the glue that held it all together. He embodied the character's confusion, determination, and ultimate transformation into a hero, capable of bending the very fabric of reality. The Matrix made Keanu a global icon, and the question it asked, what if this isn't real? 
is one that still echoes today. After the mind-bending, action-packed world of The Matrix, Keanu did something surprising. Instead of chasing another blockbuster, he starred in a light-hearted sports comedy called The Replacements. Released in 2000, it tells the story of a ragtag group of replacement football players led by Keanu's down-on-his-luck coach. Keanu even took a pay cut so the film could afford to cast the legendary Gene Hackman. Unfortunately, Keanu's next film, the thriller The Watcher, also released in 2000, was a major misfire. He played a twisted serial killer, but the movie itself was panned by critics. Even worse, Keanu later claimed he never agreed to do the film and a friend forged his signature on the contract. To avoid a lawsuit, he reluctantly starred in it. But Keanu bounced back that same year with a supporting role in Sam Raimi's supernatural thriller, The Gift. Kate Blanchett played a woman with psychic abilities who helps find a missing girl, while Keanu played her abusive husband. Audiences liked it, but one critic remarked that Keanu's acting sometimes seemed like he was reading lines from a cereal box. Showing his ability to tackle any genre, Keanu starred in the 2001 romantic drama Sweet November, opposite Charlize Theron. It was a remake of a 1968 film and sadly wasn't well received by critics, who found it too sappy. Keanu then returned to sports movies with 2001's Hardball. Based on a true story, he played a troubled guy who takes a job coaching a little league team in a tough Chicago neighborhood. While the film tried to address some serious themes, critics felt it lacked depth. By this time, Keanu's music career was also winding down. His band Dogstar split up in 2002 after releasing two albums. For a while, he played bass in a band called Becky, but left in 2005, saying he wasn't interested in a serious music career. Thankfully, 2003 saw Keanu back where he belonged, for a while at least, the world of The Matrix. Both The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions were filmed together and released in the same year. The sequels were visually stunning, although critics had mixed feelings about the focus on action over the original film's deeper themes. Still, they were box office smashes, proving the enduring power of Neo. Keanu rounded out 2003 with the hit romantic comedy, Something's Gotta Give. Sharing the screen with Hollywood heavyweights Jack Nicholson and Diane Keaton, he played a charming young doctor caught in a love triangle. Critics loved it, and Keanu once again proved he could do more than just sci-fi and action. Would this period of experimentation pave the way for even more diverse roles? Angels, Thumbsuckers, and Saving the World, sort of. 2005 saw Keanu return to darker territory with Constantine. Based on the comic book Hellblazer, he played the titular character, a cynical supernatural detective battling demons and wrestling with his own mortality. While not a critical darling, the film did well at the box office, and hey, Keanu battling demons is never a bad thing. Next up was something completely different, the quirky indie film Thumbsucker. The story followed a teenager struggling with his thumb-sucking habit and Keen who played the boy's offbeat orthodontist. Critics were impressed, praising the film's gentle humor and heartfelt performances. In 2006, Keanu took another trip into mind-bending with A Scanner Darkly. This animated sci-fi thriller, based on a novel by Philip K. Dick, saw him play an undercover cop in a dystopian future where everyone is under total surveillance. Visually stunning but a commercial flop, the film is now considered a cult classic. Keanu's performance was praised, even if the movie was too out there for mainstream audiences. Later that year, Keanu reunited with Sandra Bullock in The Lake House, a super romantic but somewhat confusing time travel love story. Box office magic? Absolutely. Critical acclaim? Not so much. Some viewers were left scratching their heads at the plot, but Keanu and Sandra's chemistry was undeniable. Keanu even tackled a serious issue in 2006, narrating the climate change documentary The Great Warming with Alanis Morissette. Two years later, Keanu reteamed with the director of Training Day for the gritty 2008 crime drama Street Kings. He played an undercover cop caught up in a deadly conspiracy. Despite action-packed scenes, 
the film received mixed reviews, with critics calling the plot predictable and Keanu's performance a bit flat. Keanu ended the decade with a big swing, a remake of the sci-fi classic The Day the Earth Stood Still. As Klaatu, an alien sent to warn Earth about its destructive ways, Keanu delivered a quietly intense performance. Sadly, the movie itself was panned for its heavy-handed environmental message and overuse of special effects. After a string of blockbusters and indie flicks, Keanu slowed things down in 2009. His only release that year was The Private Lives of Pippa Lee, a thoughtful look at a woman navigating life's complexities. Keanu had a supporting role in the film, which was praised for its strong performances and insightful storytelling. The following year, he dipped his toe back into romantic comedy territory with Henry's Crime. This quirky tale of an ex-con planning a bank heist with his former cellmate had the potential to be fun, but it sadly fell flat with audiences. So this period was a mixed bag for Keanu. There were box office hits, indie darlings, and the odd misfire. But through it all, he kept experimenting, taking risks, and defying expectations. What would the next decade bring for this unpredictable star? 2011 saw Keanu explore his creative side in a totally unexpected way. He wrote a grown-up picture book called Ode to Happiness. Illustrated by Alexandra Grant, the book was a playful, slightly melancholic reflection on finding glimmers of joy in the world. He then turned his attention to a cause close to his heart, the changing world of filmmaking. In the 2012 documentary Side by Side, Keanu produced and interviewed legendary directors like James Cameron and Christopher Nolan about the shift from traditional film to digital filmmaking. Unfortunately, his starring role in the 2012 indie drama Generation Um was less successful. The movie was panned by critics, leaving audiences thoroughly confused. But Keanu wasn't about to give up. 2013 marked a huge milestone his directorial debut with the martial arts film Man of Tai Chi. Inspired by the life of his stuntman friend, Tiger Chen, the movie followed the story of a young martial artist drawn into the dangerous world of underground fighting. Keanu teamed up with Yuan Wuping, fight choreographer from The Matrix, to create dazzling action sequences. Critics praised the stylish fight scenes, but audiences weren't hooked, making it a box office flop. Keanu's bad luck streak continued that same year with the fantasy epic 47 Ronin. This reimagined take on a classic Japanese story should have been epic, but it stumbled with critics and viewers alike. Despite a huge budget, stunning visuals, and Keanu in a starring role, the film just didn't connect. It was a disappointing end to a creatively ambitious period for Keanu. But as any fan knows, this wouldn't be the end of his story. The Baba Yaga Returns After a few years of critical and commercial duds, Keanu desperately needed a win. In 2014, he found it in the action-packed, super-stylish John Wick. Keanu was back to doing what he does best, playing a brooding, unstoppable force of nature. This time, he's a retired assassin out for revenge after his beloved dog, a final gift from his dead wife, is killed. Keanu loved the character and worked closely with the filmmakers to craft John Wick's world. Critics and audiences were equally thrilled. John Wick was a breath of fresh air in the action movie genre, with its slick fight scenes, neon-drenched visuals, and a surprisingly emotional core. Not only that, but the film was a smashing box office success, launching a franchise. 2015 was a bit of a mixed bag for Keanu, he starred in the horror thriller Knock Knock, a remake of the campy 1977 film Death Game. Playing a family man terrorized by two young women, Keanu got to show off his bewildered dad side. The movie, sadly, was not a hit with critics. Still, Keanu bounced back by lending his distinctive voice to two documentaries that year, Deep Web, about the dark side of the internet, and Mifun, The Last Samurai, a tribute to the legendary Japanese actor. 2016 was a whirlwind for Keanu, with five movie releases showing his incredible range. 
First up was Exposed, a gritty crime thriller about a detective investigating police corruption. The film itself flopped, and Keanu caught some criticism for his limited acting choices. But fear not, the year was far from over. Keanu unexpectedly showed his comedic chops, voicing a tiny adorable kitten in the action comedy Keanu. This hilarious self-aware movie was a hit with the critics. He then took a dark turn in The Neon Demon, playing a creepy motel owner in this visually striking but disturbing horror film. And if that wasn't enough, Keanu appeared in The Bad Batch, set in a dystopian wasteland. The year ended with Keanu back in the courtroom for The Whole Truth. While the film itself was forgettable, Keanu, as always, gave a solid performance. Keanu even squeezed in an appearance in the Swedish comedy web series Swedish Dicks. 2017 was all about Keanu returning to his action star roots with a vengeance. John Wick, too, saw the unstoppable assassin facing off against a global network of killers after a bounty was placed on his head. The film was a critical darling and a massive box office hit, proving audiences couldn't get enough of Keanu's stylish fight scenes and surprisingly touching performance. But Keanu didn't limit himself to just one genre. That same year, he tackled a serious subject in the drama To the Bone, playing an unconventional doctor, helping a young woman battle anorexia. While the film generated some controversy, it was praised for its realistic portrayal of the illness. Keanu even popped up for hilarious cameos in the films A Happening of Monumental Proportions and SPF 18. Reuniting with Winona Ryder, the iconic duo from Dracula, in the 2018 romantic comedy Destination Wedding was a delightful surprise. But Keanu also returned to darker stories, co-producing and starring in the thrillers Siberia, which unfortunately was panned by critics, and Replicas. 2019 was a huge year for Keanu. First, he unleashed the thrilling John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. This time, John Wick was on the run, facing off against a league of assassins and bringing his world-building to new heights. The film was another smash, raking in the cash and solidifying Keanu as the ultimate cinematic badass. Then, he did something no one expected. He voiced a hilarious Canadian stuntman daredevil named Duke Kaboom in Toy Story 4. That same year, Fans were delighted to see Keanu playing a hilariously exaggerated version of himself in the Netflix comedy Always Be My Maybe. And that's not all. 2019 also saw the first ever Keanu Khan Festival in Scotland, celebrating his career and giving fans a chance to geek out over their favorite Keanu films. Fast forward to 2020, and Keanu finally finally returned as the iconic Ted Theodore Logan in Bill and Ted Face the Music after years of speculation. It was a blast from the past, proving that some roles are timeless. Keanu even had a voice cameo as the wise tumbleweed sage in the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. He also ventured into the world of video games, bringing the rebel rocker Johnny Silverhand to life in the sprawling Cyberpunk 2077. 2021 saw Keanu's long-awaited return to the world of The Matrix in The Matrix Resurrections. While the film wasn't as groundbreaking as the original, fans were still thrilled to see Neo and Trinity back in action. Comic books, Dogstar Returns, and what's next? Keanu's creativity really exploded in recent years. In 2021, he didn't just act in stories, he created one. His comic book series, BRZRKR, about an immortal warrior struggling with his violent past, flew off the shelves. Fans and critics were blown away by the thrilling action, complex characters, and stunning artwork. Naturally, Hollywood came knocking, and Netflix is turning BRZRKR into a film with Keanu starring and an anime series to follow. But Keanu had even more in store for his fans. In a move nobody saw coming, his 90s band Dogstar reunited after 20 years away. What started as casual lockdown jam sessions with old friends turned into a full-blown album. Somewhere Between the Power Lines and Palm Trees. Released in 2023, the band even hit the concert circuit, letting fans finally see Keanu rock out on stage. From comics and music, Keanu turned his attention to the world of Formula One racing. 
his 2023 documentary series, Braun the Impossible Formula One Story, delved into the drama behind one of the sport's most incredible underdog victories. Keanu, a lifelong motorsports fan, was the perfect host for this exciting insider look. Collaborations became a theme for Keanu. He teamed up in 2024 with the acclaimed sci-fi author China Mia Veal to write The Book of Elsewhere. This new story expands on the universe he created in Barzerkar. He's even delving into the world of westerns with a standalone tale in the Barzerkar comic series called A Face Full of Bullets. Comedy seems to be the next frontier for Keanu. He joined forces with Aziz Ansari for the comedy film Good Fortune, set for release in the future, and Jonah Hill's dark comedy Outcome, about the messy world of invention. With Keanu on board, these movies are sure to be both hilarious and thought-provoking. And of course, Keanu isn't forgetting his action roots. He's ready to step back into John Wick's shoes in the upcoming 2025 spin-off Ballerina. Although the fifth John Wick movie is on the back burner, fans can still look forward to more of Keanu's stylish assassin taking on the bad guys, roles that he rejected with reasons. But behind the action hero image is a thoughtful actor who carefully chooses his projects. Over his long career, Keanu has turned down quite a few big roles, proving he's not afraid to say no and stick to his own path. One famous example is Oliver Stone's gritty war epic Platoon, 1986. Stone wanted Keanu in the film, but the movie's brutal depiction of the Vietnam War conflicted with Keanu's views. He opted out, allowing him to pursue roles that aligned better with his own beliefs. He also chose a stage production of Hamlet in Canada over a role in the blockbuster crime thriller Heat, 1995. This wasn't just any stage production. It was the coveted title role in one of Shakespeare's most iconic works at the Manitoba Theatre Centre in Winnipeg. Even with blockbuster sequels and superhero movies on the table, Keanu doesn't always jump at the chance. He turned down Speed 2, Cruise Control, 1997, likely due to a lackluster script and a desire to explore other types of films. Later, he prioritized the John Wick franchise over the chance to join the Marvel Universe in Captain Marvel 2019. Let's travel back to 2001. Imagine Keanu with long blonde hair and pointy ears as an elf in The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. It nearly became a reality, but scheduling conflicts with other commitments prevented it. According to sources, Keanu was passionate about the role of Aragorn even contacting Peter Jackson to try and land the part. A few years later, in 2008, the hilarious and over-the-top Tropic Thunder hit theaters, but without Keanu. He had some creative differences with the filmmakers, and his schedule was packed. Ben Stiller originally envisioned Keanu as the lead before taking the role himself. That same year, the visually striking Speed Racer came out, inspired by the classic anime, Keanu could have been the lead, but ultimately felt he wasn't the best fit for the role. Even the multiverse-bending Spider-Man No Way Home 2022 was on his radar, with director John Watts originally planning on Keanu taking the role of Kraven the Hunter. Ultimately, he wasn't interested and the story changed directions. On the subject of Reeves and shared universes, Dwayne Johnson confirmed in an interview that Reeves had been eyed to play, or rather voice, the mysterious director of the cyber-terrorist organization, Edeon, in his spin-off film, Fast and Furious, presents Hobbs and Shaw, 2019. In the end, Reeves passed after discussing the role with Johnson and his collaborators, because, as The Rock told us, it just didn't feel right creatively. Much like Feige and the MCU, Johnson's ultimate goal is to get Reeves to join the Fast and Furious offshoot in some capacity. So who knows, depending on how the actively developing Hobbs and Shaw 2 shakes out, Reeves may end up playing some other character, be they friend or foe to the titular duo, in the sequel. Relation with Jennifer Syme Keanu Reeves possesses an almost paradoxical reputation. He's Hollywood's beloved nice guy even while remaining intensely private about his personal experiences. 
This makes the occasional glimpses into his life all the more intriguing, especially when they touch on profound events like his relationship with Jennifer Syme. Their story began somewhere in the late 1990s, while initial accounts suggested they met at a 1998 party thrown by Reeves's band Dogstar, Jennifer's mother, Maria St. John, provided a different version, emphasizing a longer connection between the two. She even indicated that she had been present when her daughter and Reeves initially crossed paths, though the specific circumstances remain shrouded in a deliberate ambiguity. Keanu and Jennifer's relationship progressed quickly, and by December of 1999, they were overjoyed to discover that they were expecting a daughter. They planned to name her Ava, a beacon of hope in the midst of Keanu's growing fame following Speed and his upcoming role in The Matrix. However, this anticipation was cruelly shattered when Ava was stillborn a month before her due date. Tabloids reportedly offered substantial sums for a photo of Jennifer's pregnant form, a distasteful invasion that Reeves apparently resisted. The weight of this shared loss proved too much for their young relationship, though initially separating, a bond of shared grief seemed to remain. It's no surprise then that by 2001, they had reconciled in an attempt to heal together. Then, in a devastating turn, tragedy struck again. On April 1st, 2001, Jennifer attended a gathering at musician Marilyn Manson's home. Early the next morning, after reportedly being driven home by another guest, she tragically lost her life in a car accident at the young age of 28. The news was a crushing blow, with sources suggesting that Keanu struggled to contact the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office out of a desperate hope that somehow the reports were a mistake. Reeves's characteristic privacy makes it difficult to fully understand his inner struggles, yet the outward signs were unmistakable. As a pallbearer at Jennifer's funeral, his grief was etched onto his face for the world to see. Keanu's down-to-earth personality and genuine interactions with fans have made him an icon in today's world. He's been recognized for his incredible career by everyone from Forbes magazine, where he graced their Celebrity 100 list multiple times, to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where his star shines brightly. Of course, The Matrix made him one of the highest paid actors of all time, and his talent has earned him countless awards and nominations. In 2020, he was even ranked one of the greatest actors of the 21st century by the New York Times. Keanu Reeves is a true Hollywood original. Despite facing tragedy, he always finds a way to be positive and humble. His success comes from both his amazing acting skills and his kind, down-to-earth personality. He picks roles that challenge him, not ones that are simply blockbusters demonstrating a commitment to his own artistic journey. Through it all, his fans around the world have loved seeing his movies and are inspired by his life story. He's truly an icon and an inspiration. Well, that wraps up our in-depth look at Keanu Reeves. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor. Hit that like button, smash subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching.